On last week's episode of Onboard Lifestyle, we leave the small anchorage at Punta Ipala early to round Cabo Corrientes before the seas build again. We're close hauled and we're making about seven knots. Our passage went smooth with the exception of one hiccup. You're doing good. Just hang on. My dad lands a striped bonito for dinner and we limp into Paradise Village Marina on one engine where we plan to make some much needed repairs and fly back to the States for a quick family visit. So that's where we are. Let's pick up the story there. and it is time for us to get pretty serious because we are a week away from flying home and uh, we got a lot of things to do. Emma has already taken off with a friend of hers to check out the Paradise Resort uh, grounds and obviously the pool, which means we won't see her for a few hours. This is my friend Danica and we are gonna show you around this amazing resort. It's awesome. Which is fine because there's so many things that Teal and I need to get going on. First off for me, obviously I'm going to be doing some washing and so that always makes me happy. Teal in the meantime is going to be assessing our engine because you guys know that we had that leak. We didn't wanna tear into it before we get into an area that we can get some materials or if it was something more serious, we can get it all fixed. So. That's what he's doing right now, and I'm just gonna go and check and see what he's doing. Pretty much wanna go swimming every day. <laughs> the pool's awesome, isn't it? Yes, it's very awesome. <laughs> doesn't look bad. It's just a, a leak in the wet exhaust. You know, we were in Chamela and I noticed uh, when we were doing our pre-departure check that there was a little seawater underneath the engine. So I tasted it and it was... Gross, it, by the way. Gross. Well, you got to figure out if it's fresh water or seawater. Uh, and it was seawater. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any coolant in it as well. But uh, it was seawater, so I traced it up to our wet exhaust elbow, and it was just a small drip. But I didn't want to run this engine with that uh, leak. I didn't know where it was coming from, what, you know, what gave way. So we kind of just shut this engine down, and for the past 140 nautical miles coming up and around uh, uh, Cabo Corrientes, we just uh, sailed as much as we could and limped along on our port engine. Well, we're in a place now where I could fix it. I felt comfortable tearing it apart here. I didn't want to do it at anchor, just in case I didn't have the parts. And uh, so I think the first thing I need to do is uh, tear that whole exhaust elbow off and find out where it's coming from. Because there's well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's like almost a dozen pieces to that elbow itself. And I'm not sure where it's leaking. So I'll tear that out first. It's hot though. <laughs> no. This shopping center has everything. There's clothing stores, there's a subway, McDonald's, other fast food stuff, and there's even a laundry area here. Whenever we're here, we go and get some ice cream at McDonald's. It's my favorite. As I unbolted the exhaust elbow, it became clear where the leak was coming from because a seawater mix arm broke off in my hand. I'm so glad that we had decided to shut this engine down when we did because this could have been a real mess real fast as seawater would have flooded the engine compartment at a high flow rate. Our bilge pumps would surely keep up, but by being proactive, we avoided having to deal with fresh water rinsing the engine compartment and dealing with possible future corrosion from the spraying salt water. 
they have pretty much everything here. There's pools, there's a shopping center, there's even tigers and macaws. It's crazy. There are, <laughs> there's so many macaws here. Um, they always take them out here and sometimes they take a hose out and like feed them the water like a dog. It's hilarious. This is Daisy and Duke's area right here. And you can always see them just kind of sleeping. I've only seen them awake a few times. Another great thing about being here is the hospitality lounge. It's air conditioned, there's a bunch of couches, there's a TV, there's a vending machine, there's super nice showers, and of course, relaxation areas with good internet. This is the piece that snapped off, uh, took it to uh, up to the marina, and they have their own machine shop here on site. They tapped out the broken piece and threaded in a new one for me and they charged us a whopping 100 pesos. What is that, five bucks? Yeah, about less, five bucks. Less than five bucks. Yeah, I know. That's the concept here in Mexico. Yeah. If you don't have the part, they can make it for you. Yeah, so everything's uh, lined At up. At a very de reasonable price, too. Oh. It's decent, and it was fast. Yes, so I'm cleaning up this part. This is all cast, and starting to show some uh, wear and life on it, so. I'm going to clean it up and shoot it with some high temperature paint just to slow this decaying process down. Well, we're also doing this because we did this on our last boat where anytime Teal does um, any, engine, any work. engine work, we know what year it was. So you color code it. Yeah. Our last boat looked like a, like an engine from Benetton. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It works out. Makes it look kind of fun too. She's showing her age. She is. But it's we'll, not a bad thing, huh? We'll, we'll stay up on it and uh, keep things running smooth. But. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a little age on your girl. <laughs> That's what I tell you every day. <laughs> I've got it all cleaned up. Put some high temp paint on here. Got it all polished first, sanded smooth. Put a couple layers on there to protect this. New gaskets, I actually picked up two gaskets, one spare. Uh, bolts are cleaned up, everything's set. Now it's uh, just getting this thing back together. Another cool thing about this area is the local crocodiles that swim around and from time to time you can see them on the beach. Yeah, we saw one just yesterday. There's also a lot of iguanas here and they are super cool. has now been holed up in this hot engine compartment. I want to see what he's doing. Sweating is what I'm doing. Turn on the fan. I will. That'd probably help, wouldn't it? A little bit. Man. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Is it though? Everything's cleaned up back here. Just dry fitting it, making sure the gasket's gonna work. It looks perfect. I hey. think you're becoming quite contortionist. I know. Well, it's easy. Once your legs go numb, you can't feel them. It doesn't hurt anymore. And yet you still complain. It's what I do. That looks like a nice wet exhaust. Almost brand new looking. It does, huh? Well, this is so thick, it would last years, even though the, just the rust is kind of bothersome to look at. Well, it's nice to give it a little treatment, too, though. Okay. Do you need help?
Okay, this looks really good. Feels nice to get this project 100% done. We knew that our last boat, Savannah, was in the area, and we heard from another cruiser that she was in Paradise Village Marina. I felt torn whether or not to go and see her, because we knew that she had been abandoned over five years ago. Savannah was left with all her ports and hatches open over PV's rainy season. At some point, someone closed her up with two feet of rainwater standing in all three holes. Over the next five years, the trap moisture decayed her from the inside out. Her decks are now spongy. Her support beams are gone. Her mast now sunk into the box beam. Her mooring cleats have failed. Her interior is rotting. Her bottom is thick with growth. Her life is over. Savannah is a 1998 41-foot Lauren Williams trimaran that we purchased new in 99 and did a full refit over four years to make her our own. We purchased her in Alameda, California and sailed her to Seattle, Washington to start the refit. After a cold and rainy winter, we decided to sail her back down to sunny California to finish our project. Over the next three years, we tirelessly worked on Savannah, spending thousands of hours transforming our boat into our cruising home. Her refit was extensive, as every inch of Savannah was modified. We finished the refit in 2004 and set sail to the Sea of Cortez, where we spent the next three and a half years sailing over 6,100 nautical miles, exploring, meeting lifelong friends, and falling in love with this amazing lifestyle. I feel sorrowful seeing our once pristine boat in such a dilapidated state. I walk down the dock at sunset each night and stare at her, just remembering. I feel saddened. Our once beautiful Savannah is gone. I didn't think I'd be emotional about this, but it's kind of got to me. Well, you know, I mean, to be perfectly honest, you guys, it's, um, it, we knew that she was in bad shape. We just didn't know the extent of it. And, and then seeing her, uh, up close and personal and seeing her in such a dilapidated state, it was, that, it was shocking. I mean, that should have never happened. It shouldn't have, and it was just uh, you know it's hard because that was our baby, that was our first boat, we, we you put know. So we, much time, time and, and love and energy and sweat and tears, and, and here comes the waterworks. <laughs> it's a, it <laughs> it's is, like it's, gift to me. It's, it's so a, hard. It's like your pit. firstborn, you know. Yes, I have a pit in my stomach you know? right now. And and seeing that she wasn't well taken care of, it just um, it's just it's so sad, you know. I mean. She was the reason that we are continuing our cruising lifestyle because she jump started this whole idea and this love for us and to see her no longer a sailing vessel is just uh... that, that boat will never sail again. She's done. There is no way 
It'd be too much money, too much time to restore that boat. No. It, she's done. That That is her final resting place right there. You know, and the sad thing is, is that, you know, we... We've heard a little bit of, of what happened to her, and obviously there's two sides to every story, and you know, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. So we will never know exactly what happened to or, her or, or why. why. Yeah. Yeah. So. All we have is memories. We do. We have lots amazing of, memories. Lots of good memories. So and, uh, I am toasting to Savannah, our first love. <sighs> I know it's just so hard. She was a good boat. <laughs> I feel the same way. I do. I feel sad every time I think about it, you know. Okay, turn off the camera. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Onward Lifestyle. If you liked our video, don't forget to give us a like and please remember to subscribe to our channel to help us grow. These videos are made possible by the support of our amazing patrons. Join our crew if you can. I never saw Savannah before this, and seeing my friends get emotional over her makes me want to give them a hug. Now that they have officially closed that chapter, we are ready to treat BASIC with some extra TLC. Come back next week to see if we can get more projects done before we fly out. See you then!